As long as we humans have had the ability to share a common history, public art has been with us. It's been imprinting that history on the spaces we occupy. Public art tells a visual narrative of the values and character of a society throughout the ages. This story begins over 17,000 years ago. This is a picture of cave paintings in the Lascaux grottos of southern France. And the people of the time drew what was important to them, their food source. Of course, as time moved forward, our art and symbolism got more sophisticated. During the Italian Renaissance, um, masters used perspective drawing in order to create these beautiful frescoes that uh, really reflected the religious traditions and values of the people at the time. Of course, today we have our fair share of public art. We have sculpture, we have murals, we have street art. Uh, some of it is publicly funded, like that we find in government buildings and national parks. Some of it's privately funded, like the private contributions that went to Kapoor's Cloud Gate. And some of it's more independent, like Banksy's work. But what these all have in common is that they are in the public sphere. They are publicly accessible. Now, what makes public art so important is that these artists don't work in a vacuum. You see, public art is both an attempt to influence and express the culture and community that it inhabits. And we can see this a lot in Harrisburg. So at the top here, we have the work of SR81. And, we, and his work um, really reflects the common resident. Uh, often it has common relationships reflected like that between a mother and child. But there's this energy and emotion in his work that really helps us and influences us to see the joy in life. Then we have Tony Truesdale's famous mural of Frederick Douglass. And this mural really helps us to recognize the role Harrisburg has played as a capital city and our importance in history for that fact. And then here we have a recent mural of Megan Davis. And Megan actually worked with the community, and the community voted on this design to bring it to life. And it's a real reflection of their hope for the next generation. Now, I'm sure looking at all these images, you have some kind of reaction to them. Well, that reaction is very important. In fact, the public's reaction to public art is just as essential as the very materials used to make it. That's because it is through this reaction that the art does its part in creating a public persona, one that's more cohesive and mature. We see this especially in community-based artwork. So um, Papona Sorio made this beautiful pavilion. Um, it actually took pictures of residents in the Latino community of Northern Philadelphia. And he decorated this pavilion with these pictures. And today what happens is children actually come to the pavilion and they take photographs next to their ancestors. So in this way, they're able to understand where they are in the visual narrative. And it really helps them to appreciate their cultural heritage. Now, the Penny Bach of the Fairmount Park Art Association, she calls this interaction with art the afterlife of public art. It's almost as if art is an apparition of the artist that stays with us long after the, um, long after the artist has moved on to their next work. Now, similarly in Harrisburg, we have a mural called Live the Conversation. And if you haven't seen this, it's in the South Allison Hill neighborhood. And the artist took these portraits of community residents and um, community leaders. And they're dispersed throughout this tree that represents the evolution of the neighborhood. Now, surrounding the image is this message of nonviolence. And so it's a real source of inspiration for the neighborhood. The, the message, live the conversation, it's really a challenge that when we're facing problems that we use a peaceful dialogue and that we look to the role models of uh, the examples of role models in our community. And it continues to be a source of pride for the South Allison Hill neighborhood. Now, 
public art is not always trying to create a um, persona of cohesion or stability. Sometimes it's trying to challenge us. Sometimes it's trying to you know, change our perspective on social and political messages. And uh, we saw this a lot in the past year. You know, uh, we had a pretty interesting primary season. And a lot of artists actually went out to the street. And they wanted to, you know, display their disgust with politics as it stands. They wanted to see politicians that uh, really cared about their needs and didn't just pay lip service to them. They wanted to see an end to neoliberal politics. And so they went out to the street and made many murals uh, describing that. Now, um, we find that that's like the purest part of public art, is that they're able to take this message without a screen of media or uh, Facebook algorithms. They're able to just put it out there in the street and get their message across. We understand how powerful public art is when it's threatened. And public art has been threatened throughout history for many reasons, mostly political. Um, you might have heard in the news in the past few years that ISIL has destroyed many statues and artifacts dating back to the 9th century BC. And they've destroyed uh, even shrines and other worship sites of fellow Muslims. And they did this for claims of heresy. Well, if you're like me, you have a pretty strong reaction to something like that. And why is that? Well, it's because we recognize that what these men are doing is they're taking a piece out of that visual narrative. They're poking a hole in the story that is humanity. And so we feel it very personally. Of course, even in the West, there's a challenge between uh, artists and public. And so we see that in many works of street artists uh, who try to put a message across. Uh, there was an interesting case of, a, of an artist in Melbourne, Australia named Lush Hooks, who uh, posted a, or well, painted a lewd uh, street art of Hillary Clinton. And so there was a lot of strong reaction to it. But I think what he was trying to do was start conversations around the role that sexism has played in this past political cycle, uh, those claims that have been valid and those that have been more obnoxious. Uh, I think he was trying to start conversations around our political and military policies. And there was this really interesting aspect of it that the image started out as a meme on the internet before it was, uh, before Lushtex put it to the wall. And so there's this theme about the role the internet has played in the, in politics this past year. But Lushix got a lot of pushback for it. In fact, uh, when he posted it to Instagram, Instagram suspiciously suspended his account. And when he, um, uh, or sorry, the city council actually threatened the building owner for lewdness uh, with a fine if he didn't take it down. And so um, Lushix, in, in a compromise, he, he covered the image with a burqa. And so, um, so, but we see that that push and pull between artists still exists. Um, now, if we look back to um, the way cities and states use public art, it's in a very different way. They want to use public art to show that their little corner of the world is thriving. And we see this throughout history. Uh, this is a picture of Ramses II statues at the Abu Simbel Temple dating back to the 13th century BC. And what it really reflects is that um, art can be used in order to show dominance and power and, and prestige. Uh, what Ramses II was trying to do with this is to impress his southern neighbors and also to reinforce the status of Egyptian religion. Similarly today, cities use public art to show that they're thriving socially and economically. Now you might say, Brian, well, Harrisburg's a small city. We have economic hurdles. Uh, is this something that we can really afford? Well, I'd say it depends what your goal is for Harrisburg. If your goal is to see it grow and thrive, 
I'd say we can't afford not to. The Knights Foundation did a survey of 43,000 people in 43 cities. And what they found was that social offerings and aesthetics ranked higher than education, economy, and even safety as far as driving factors of attachment to the city. And in our neighbor to the east, Philadelphia, we find that viewing public art is the second most popular activity. So we see that through a great public arts program, we can bring in more residents and we can strengthen local communities. But it doesn't have to just come from public funds. There are a lot of sites out there now where, for crowdfunding, like Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And one organization in the city, Sprocket Mural Works, has made great use of this. In fact, they recently had a mural installed on 3rd Street by artist Crystal Wagner. And um, the, they funded it through Kickstarter. They reached their goal, and now we have this beautiful mural on 3rd Street. But I think it, art is so important for Harrisburg because of what it tells us about ourselves. When you consider some of these images, child at play, believe in the beauty of your dreams, this art is telling us a story about Harrisburg. Remember, public art is a visual narrative. And what is that story? Well, I think it's a story of hope. It's a belief in our creativity and our ability to push this city forward, to be a city more beautiful, more innovative, more inclusive. And I just can't wait to see what the next panel in that story is. Because for Harrisburg, public art is a way to show we're thriving. It's a way to show our eyes are towards the stars. Of course, for me, it's not just enough to make public art. I think we should share it with the world. And so that's why I've developed this web app, Murality. Murality is an app to find and share public art. It's a way to document and curate the visual narrative that public art tells. There's also a wiki component that can be used to tell the story of the art. Now, Harrisburg is my home, and it's the test bed for this application. But I think this is something that can grow to see small and large. Because when you share what's best about yourself with the world, you draw people to you. And that's what public art is. Cities could use the application to organize mural walks, both attracting new residents and, and reinforcing a local identity. Art has always been a way for us to say, I was here. I made that. This is who I am. Public art is a way to say, we were here. This is who we are. This is who we hope to be together. So that's why I think it's so essential that we continue to produce, curate, and document public art. Because where there's art, there's vitality. Thank you.